see here we took out the ignition uh, wire here that ran into our ignition here and you can see let me go and take this guy let me fix this guy real quick here it needs to be bundled now that we know that or by the way our brake bleeder actually it's still actually tight enough even though the bolts is damaged you can see there i can actually still use my rear brake i took it out for a spin and my rear brake actually does break a little bit for me so it helps out when i can go at least 35 miles but for sure the front brake is our full one that we need to bleed as soon as we get that bolt taken care of back there we'll probably be uh, able to start that and back again but yeah our brake bleeder for right there and then also we notice here that there's no leak so our jb weld actually held up pretty tight so i can put my finger through here yes look at that dry as a bug i think you can see my fingerprints so yeah no problem here so we don't need this towel anymore we can use this for a wipe now all right so now we can put back our seal here this is where we were going to put it back so let's bring it up so it's been what a few days now we wrapped the engine we i braked it a little bit i took it out for a ride i'll get my gopro shortly i just ordered it with the helmet so i'll be able to use and then show you guys the ride and stuff like that so what i'm just gonna put through here Bring it up, cover that ugly uh, JB Weld looking thing. I'm gonna go even further up. Okay. Now this is not gonna protect it from leaking, it's just for aesthetic maybe. But let me try to see if I can go any higher. I'm gonna bring it higher, higher. And uh, it, it had a little bit of a loop from the brake fluid, it will help so you know there's dry as a bug. So there's no brake fluid actually helping lube. Okay. There go. I want me it over there. Kind of like it. Maybe even go any further. Let's see how that's what this one is. On this side, yeah, I actually went all the way to the little round piece. So let's do that the same way here. Sorry, my USB here. I, I have a charger too, by the way. I charge it with my RAM mount. It's amazing. It charges really quick. I use the Anchor uh, USB charger. I'm not USB charger, sorry, the car charger. Because this has adapter for the car charger. Which is really cool. Okay, let me try to make it up there. It's coming. Sorry. There we go. Surely but coming. We expect it to be tight like this. Okay, try to make it round. It's kind of uneven tightening. But there it goes, coming. Okay, once I get over that little hump, I can bring it backwards a little bit. There we go. There we go, that looks nice. Nice and flush. Now this one right here will be covered from the dragon. The dragon little protruding here. Let's see if I can get that guy over. Now that guy's gonna be even tighter. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh. See, I'm ripping it from the bottom. All right. Yeah, it's all that, um, what do you call that? The brake fluid. Yeah. I mean, all that JB Weld. All right, so that guy's not going any further without some lube, so we could probably put a little bit of oil in there and try to get in there, but do it forcefully. I want to keep it dry. That way I can really see if it's coming from the lube or if there's still oil coming out, but I don't think so. It's pretty solid in there. So I'll try to work it a little bit more now. <clears throat> kind of twist it. Hopefully it understands how much I need to get in there. <laughs> there. <clears throat> For aesthetic, really. All right, let's bring this guy down. How's that? Not bad? We kind of almost tear it a little bit in the bottom. <clears throat> So there we go. We got our nice little seal back where our dragon hose covered with ugly JB Weld. And let's get back to what we're doing. Okay, so this one right here, uh, you can see here, remember the ignition coil? There was four wires. Yeah, oh, let me see. I was gonna fix this after I put that back guy. So this one turns. Let's see. All the cable wire and stuff like that. There we go. I actually use this while riding still like this. Okay, let's turn this around okay let's clamp this guy over there we go let him sit it should come in the clamp oh we're gonna take actually our gauge off so probably better not okay so anyway he's out of the way we can just see it 
Okay, so remember ignition coil, there was four little uh, prongs, wires coming to it. Show you again. Okay, click this out, lift it up. There we go. So that was the four wires coming to your ignition coil here with the keys. I'm running here. And I have a lock mechanism that lock my, when I turn it, I believe, to my left hand side all the way to steering column. And then they'll protrude in a little hole slot and when the key's not in there, it locks it up. Or you can turn it, I'm sorry, you turn the key counterclockwise for it to lock it up. It won't let me do it now because uh, the steering wheel is not all the way protruded to your left. Or you can see the fork. But that'll be it. And then um, we're going to want to go and disconnect these two wires again to take off our gauge cluster. These are only two wires holding in the gauge cluster. And you have your odometer reading right there, see? Now I need to get over there and get that guy right here. So I'm going to go over. Reach over there. It's much easier for me. Let me go and take these guys out real quick. I mean, let me put the ignition back in. We don't need to be exposed to dirt or anything. It has dielectric grease in there. Um, dielectric is good for keeping moisture, uh, corroding your contacts, especially your ignition. Let me see if I can do it here. I know it fits this way. <laughs> okay, there we go. Just try and get the leverage. Put this guy in a little bit. There it goes, like a syringe now. Just kind of stuff it in there. Now these ones are the same. I think I built up some finger muscle now. I can probably do these guys easy, no problem. Let me go ahead and try angle it. There we go. First of all, you want to poke this hook out. Then you just grab the rest of the body. There we go, that guy just came out with it. But there was a hook on this guy too as well. So these two right here are going back up with the harness. And again, I gotta get that, get that little rail there, guy. So there you go. You see me? I got good leverage. I put I put a tie strap by the way because that little ring here tends to drop all the way down to the other end of the cable, and I'm not gonna try to chase it back up and you know find it right there, you know. So I rather just put a little tie strap to prevent it from falling further down. So that tie strap actually works well. You can see that little tie strap there. It's not to hold it on place or anything like that. It's just to hold that little rubber cap. I mean the little. Uh, metal uh, or aluminum cap or you know stainless cap there from falling so let me let me go in the way where you can see what i'm doing let me get this guy out of the way the bushels there we go there you go see i'm screwing it it's almost like screwing a, a stem valve on your tire there and it has a little piece of uh, metal cable or rod flexible where it spins along with the cable and the wheel turns it turns that cable from inside. So you want to actually grease inside this before you put it back in. Um, you want to, well, when you first install it, of course, see there, it has a lot of, uh, what you call that, uh, grease there, see that? It's kind of a square shape, and that little piece of, right there, just keeps spinning when the wheel, the front wheel is spinning. It forces that to spin, and it forces this to spin, which is certain of a revolution of spin it'll turn this odometer reading and that's how you get that reading but the rpm one we figured out it was actually the pretty much the ignition coil wire that needs to actually be fed back into the our uh, pickup coil wire so we're going to go i mean our pickup wire from our stator in order to work and our stator still needs to be connected to our benjing here to initiate a spark because it's a built-in ignition coil so we figured that one out so now this thing is ready to come off so here we go it's all loosey loosey. Okay, I'm gonna take it over here. Look at that. Oh, you can see the guts. And you can see what's inside here too. So it's very easy. You know, since most of the people have the front panel, they gotta take a lot of things out. But you can see here, I only got four screws and they were actually joining. See the brackets here to protect the plastic. They were joining this as well. So now you could take the housing off of this as well. You actually have to, sorry. So let me go ahead and show you right now. I'm going to put in the table. We're going to go start taking off the housing. Sorry, I'm everywhere. I'm carrying my charger with me. The battery did die. So I'm working on uh, whatever battery here Make from the extension. All right, so let's go ahead and take these off. And you're going to be able to see what's inside your odometer reading. Ooh, it's not good. Keep it shiny. I like my anchor. See, I always just use the Anchor brand. They're just really well. I have it for the car charger as well, which I'm very pleased. And I also have it for a portable uh, battery. So let me plug this in before it dies. 
Here we go. <clears throat> Extension here is powering the phone. There we go. It's USB. Has a you know this is like a quick charger, just an intelligent charger, <laughs> whatever that means. All right, so let me go ahead. And Putting on the hard floor, I might as well just get a towel and cover this part here. That way I can just lay it down. All right, here we go. So we're gonna take this one apart. And again, you're gonna have to take uh, the housing apart and it's, see here, visual inspection, how it looks. These are, remember again, these were the screws from, the four screws here belongs to one, two, oh, I'm sorry. Four screws here belongs to that, that right here which was sitting right here when it was. That four screws there belongs right here. See, and it ties into the front of the other housing. So we have only four screws really. Four screws. So these four screws right here. There's another one there. These four screws right here tie into the housing. And then these two screws was just the battery cover here that we had to take off to tune our tune our carburetor, adjust the idle screw again. So we'll leave that right there. So you can see how many screws are coming out as we go further. Now, this is also a housing that we need to take off. The reason why is in order to get, to, it's actually not two, one, two, three pieces of uh, plastic, um, clear plastic glass, but what it is is actually one whole piece. And you'll see that in a little bit here when I take it off. So we're trying to get to see the mechanism of our RPM. So let's go and take that apart and see, check it out. Uh, you have all your little lights here. These lights are looking like this. I'm not sure what they're called, but they're small. You can replace them if they ever go out on you. I'm thinking of maybe putting some LED ones if they make them for this size. And you have to use a number here. It says 12 volt something. Look at that. 12 volt looks like something wattage, three watts. It comes here, it looks like a nine. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so that one right there, you can leave it back in there. It's no problem. So we're gonna go ahead and we're mainly going after the cluster gauge that's in here. So we'll have to take these two out, but before we can even get to it, we actually have to take this off of its housing. The reason why is the screw that's holding that glass cover, it's right here. You can't tell, right? Because it doesn't show you on the other side as well because it's you know hidden for aesthetic reasons. So you can see that. So you need to take this cover off this little bat cover here, <laughs> call it like the bat symbol. So we need to take this plastic cover off of it first. So let's do that. Let me get my Phillips. Okay. And there's probably one, two, three, four, four screws as well holding it. So we're gonna take this off. I believe they're gonna be a certain size so we can remember it from our uh, longer screws or it might be the same, we'll see. Let's see, take one out first. Yeah, they look pretty much similar. If you look at them, they're all the same. There goes this dropping down. Just came right off the rail. All right, so this one just came off. You can see here, more than likely it's probably the same. But the thing about different this, this one's made a little fatter, I believe. The reason why is, is so it can hold a little bit more of the plastic, you know, the, you know spread out the surface so it doesn't rip through these little uh, holes that are in the plastic. I mean, right here, see how they're bigger, aren't they? So it needs to actually stay inside here. So this bigger one is made for this one. So we could tell now. So we'll put this aside just to make sure it doesn't mix up with anything. We'll put this right there next to this one right here. Okay, so we'll come back for that one uh, once we actually install it back. Okay, so taking one bolt out so far. <laughs> All the talk, not enough action. Here we go, now we're gonna go for action. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off as well. See are all your lights and stuff that triggers and this goes again to your ignition uh, harness attachment sort of and it goes to the rest of your scooter it's, it's pretty simple schematic if you understand a lot of electronics i don't to be honest with you um, but those who work in the electronic field it's very simple they say the chinese scooter uh, schematic it's basic ground positive running you know the trigger the stator signal so so it shouldn't be too hard to install alarm now that we have the whole front cover off like this. So we might actually do the alarm uh, soon too. But let's go ahead and just get this all the, 
So you can see here it's coming off. You don't want to put too much pressure again. It's, you know, it's just held by a little thin piece of plastic. So you want to support it as much as you can when you're taking these screws out. Okay, there we go. We got our four screws sitting here. Again, these ones were from the other plastic now. You can see here when we take it off, this just comes off the housing. See, there it goes. And now it's revealed. There's the Phillips screw here. That's gonna make us able to get into our gauge and we can actually even finger the needle once we take these two off. These two were the only thing that was holding this together. I'm gonna to show you right now. So this is what the cluster looked like, the bat symbol. <laughs> so we'll put that aside. And now we just got our gauge cluster. This is pretty much what they normally sell as gauge cluster. And they're $61, by the way, or something like that. I can't believe you could find one for the Zenon. So <laughs> uh, that's a lot of money for just a gauge cluster that are so pretty much just some plastic and basic mechanism. But $61, you know, if you really want your original uh, gauge cluster and, uh, you know, the fitment, and it's very hard to find, but you can find one there at that price. Okay, so here we go. We're screwing it, unscrewing it. All right, so we're going to take that one off. Yeah, I'm very pleased everything's looked like it's working accordingly. Our brake line we didn't have to replace, but unfortunately we broke the other end of the brake bleeder bolts. And I'm probably gonna replace that. NCY actually makes brake bleeder bolts. They're like a blue color. I'm probably gonna replace it with some NCY one. We'll see. Um, but I'll, I'll definitely use a stock one when it first comes in, just to test everything out first to make sure it's working as it is originally. Because uh, I ordered the, you know, the stock uh, whole brake caliper assembly. So I'm gonna try to get that put in and you know, get a little bit better brake bleed because right now it's usable, but it's not really safe. I wouldn't recommend it. And also, I'm going to probably start tuning the variator because I realized my pickup speed was very low. So that's it. That was the only two Phillips screws here holding it. There you go. Look at that. So you would think it's the one piece and you're trying to pop this out, right? Don't do it because if you look at it, there it goes. It's just like a serving tray. <laughs> Just comes right off. There it goes. There's the other piece right here. Very shiny. So you can just set, uh, reassemble that back here. Just have it in place. And you can start wiping it down, you know. Uh, get yourself a nice clean towel. Just kind of get all the debris out of there. It's plastic, so you don't want to use anything that will scrape it. Don't try to brush it with any kind of uh, harsh, you know, detergent or soap or something like that. Just give it a good wipe down as much as you can. So there we go. Nice and clean. All right, we'll put that side there. And here goes our gauge cluster. Look at that. You can finger everything here. Pretty simply made, huh? Whoa. Uh, don't do it too much because there is a spring there. You don't want to break everything. Yeah, okay. Ideally, we want our RPM to go past 200. No. <laughs> I wish we could. I mean, not our RPM, our miles per hour, right? And we want ideally all our battery to be the most highest and our fuel to always be the most highest. <laughs> but that would be cheating it. And then, of course, our RPM, you know, we want it to be actually very low, still like this, and still have so much more mileage to go before the RPM even hits the red line. That's ideally, you know, right? Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and, uh, in order to get to this one and see the mechanism of it, we're going to flip it around. And it does have a little peak hole right here, which serves no point at all, actually. What it is, is just to stabilize the wire. And I think they did this purposely to be able to put this, um, the harness through this housing last. So that's probably why, because it's just made. I'm going to take a little flat, change it to a flat head here. That way I can plow my fingers, not that, not that efficient. Okay, so let me go ahead and... So there's like a little peak hole for the wires. It's just really to grip the wires though. I mean, and then also I think they made it perfectly the size. Watch, I'll show you. See that right there? So you can actually see this little harness. You can see how they made it. So it can actually just protrude right in there back, see? Now it's back in there. Now I can't get it out. Well, I can, but... I show you that, and then the, these two right here, these two Phillips here. That's the only thing that actually stabilizing this whole plate right here on here. So I'm gonna take that off uh, with a Phillips. Change this back. There you go. So yeah, you're gonna use a Phillips most of the time, unless you replace it with. I'm not sure. I'm gonna replace everything with um, Allen bolts, all my hex screws, and all some of my Phillips. So we'll see how it looks. I think I like the Allen bolt look, look better because it looks so much more like. You're not just pro, but like really aggressive, like Iron Man aggressive. So I'm probably gonna try to do that way with the scooter. I replace some of the, just the regular Phillips and with Allen's, starting with my brake fluid uh, master cylinder, uh, you know, those two little Phillips. Oh shoot, it dropped down already, so here it goes, that was it. 
that was it see there you go your whole harness and your whole uh, RPM gauge right there see the mechanism I'm gonna show you hold it very thin it looked like they plastered some plastic over it that's why they could probably do different colors easily I just wish they did actually this is not my camera blurring they made it purposely to blur to give it the effect but I just wish they did just kept it like a solid you know a little clear like this you know what I mean but they wanted to go with a blur look so anyway I'll leave this here that way you can see it a little bit too but yeah so there's a the housing there you can see it it's nothing more but just a plastic and the bulb sticking through it from the other side and then you can see here when I turn this but you can see in the back mechanism you can see the mechanism right here watch so I'm gonna spin this see that that's it there's a coil wire there that that I guess a certain RPM or pulse coming through it it triggers it we know that it increases the AC voltage when we rave up some more so it has all these capacitors and you know I guess there's some maybe resistors in there there it goes there's a resistor you know diodes and stuff like that to really figure out you can see how light is it's translucent so you can hold up to the light and you can see here how the light penetrates through so that one light right there is what that actually lights up this side of the um, so if you put a brighter light of course it's gonna really be bright maybe change it to like some uh, LED lights you know for longevity and it's probably gonna be a little bit more brighter so there's it that's that's your mechanism right here so we know it's nothing wrong with it now what I did was I actually not only just troubleshoot from this wire here to find continuity but I troubleshoot all the way to the where the soldering joints were and there were continuity in here so there's continuity in here these wires are good from this point all the way to the soldering joint the only thing could be bad is could be the coil wires or some of these resistors and passer and that's a little more advanced than I could probably troubleshoot or even do so while we know it works now all we need to do is to bring back the trigger wire um, connected to their uh, stator wire pickup but we still need the stator wire pickup again to power our uh, spark plug from our DC ignition uh, built-in uh, CDI here so uh, we have to tie them both all in there so what I'm gonna do is now bring some soldering and we're gonna go ahead and join this wire right here this little guy here we're gonna join them with the, the blue wire and the black and gray wire. We're just gonna, there is a way you can just tap it in and clamp it. You know, I just don't want that bulk in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort of use this call. I guess it's already pre-soldered. Uh, with, at the same time it has, um, what do you call that? This, this right here, heat shrink as well. So when you shrink it, the little solder round ring, it actually melts in and joins the whole wire together. So we're gonna try and use that for the first time. Make sure we take off the tie strap and get our brake line out of the way because we don't want to heat shrink or brake line anyway because <laughs> we work so hard and trying to savage it the end of it so let's do that <coughs> after we go ahead and assemble this one back in so make sure everything looks good while you have it open you can go ahead and do a little cleaning on it you know just kind of wipe everything out and I would open more of this mechanism we'll save that for another time and another troubleshoot when we run into but now you know how to actually take off your gauge and then I see what seeing what the gauge mechanism looks like um, it actually feels like it's probably a good I say maybe um, you know it doesn't weigh too heavy but it still has a little bit of weight on there I say maybe it weighs like uh, three-fourths of a pound Got some little numbers here too there go. that is our RPM cluster so when this moves can't see the side. When this revs up, see that coil wire. It's like a whole. If this was a big, huge building, you think it's an arc reactor from uh, Tony Stark's. I mean, if it was colored a little more in the, in the bulb, right? <laughs> so there you go. See that how it comes back smoothly. So when you let go of the throttle, that's how it retracts back on its own. It's like a little spring mechanism that does that. And then when you rave up again, it forces that. That come up like that so vroom, 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 vroom. okay so that's it we're gonna put that one back now we can actually like I said again I think they made that little slot there to be able to fit this in afterwards so you can actually take it out of course yeah because you can't take it out even if you can fit it in afterwards they want you to be able to actually get access to it so this was kind of awesome user-friendly to actually take out it wasn't too hard now I'm gonna try to take it put it back in the slot here let's see if I can do it yeah, that's no problem. Might have to bend a little bit, but it'll work. There we go. Protrude it right out. All right, so now everything looks there. looks good. 
You're gonna close that one back up. Uh, make sure nothing's cramped down or anything. And in order to seal this, you're gonna have to hold this in place and you have to perfectly align it. You see there, there's little two Phillip holes again. You wanna make sure you keep sliding until you feel like the line, there you go. And when you have it aligned, put your hand, grip it nicely, both of them like a C-clamp. Okay, and then because you need to put pressure, uh, okay, so now you got pressure on there, you can get one Phillips in there. Once you get one Phillips, you're good. You're golden. Okay, here we go. It's time to get that one Phillips in there. Oh, I didn't realize this was magnetized. Or I made it magnetized. Okay, here we go. Feel like it's going in there. Trying to get the resolution there for you. Yeah, it's going in. There we go. And careful again, it's still plastic. This side of it, you don't want to crack it. You know, or even pull out the threads from the other end of the the um, the gauge RPM cluster so assembly. Here we go. Now I'm gonna try to wiggle it because it doesn't seem like it wants to go all the way in. So you don't want to. I could force it in, but you want to probably loosen this end if it gets too tight. Probably needs a little bit more wig room here. All right. You don't want to cross thread it. See, it feels like it's just going anywhere it wants to. So let's see what's let's inspect it and see what's going on. You know why? <laughs> That's why. Because the actual bolt for that one is right here. Not this big one. This one's actually the one that's holding these two sides here, remember? Oh boy. So that's why. So you know from what I was gonna I could have easily just drove this in there and regretted it later. So once you feel some resistant, don't do it. What it is is the thread also is different and it's not a, a metal screw. Metal screws don't have sharp edges like this when it's making contact to a metal surface. It's more flat, and you can see the thread size is much more smaller, much more thinned out than this wider one. So that's why it wouldn't fit. It, I mean, I could have drove it in there, but it would definitely, it would, it would re-thread this and we would have a problem putting the right screw in there. So this is the right screw here. So we're gonna go and put that one in. See, this one goes in like butter. There we go. Spin it right freely in there. Okay. We'll secure this one in, and then we'll come back to secure the other one. There we go. Not putting too much force in it because you have so much leverage with a big screwdriver. Careful not to retighten it. There we go. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. So here we go. Our thing is back in there. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay, now we're going to go and put it back in our housing here. I'm going to go and wipe it down a little bit more. Just make sure because this is the final blow before it goes back in. So I'm gonna go and give it a good clean wipe. Blow off any debris. You got some a little bit, you know, humidity stain that causes this right here. All right, so here we go. Gonna give it a blow. Okay, so I'm gonna give it there. Gonna lay it right here. All right, looks nice. And then we're gonna bring our top black cover that more like a little cover brace. So again, these are not sectioned off things where you could take a flat head and chuck them out. They're one piece, okay? So if you do that, you're gonna end up cracking it, thinking that it's actually two, uh, three separate glass pieces that you can pop from the front. So that was it. That's how you um, pretty much take out your gauge cluster and clean it. So you can see there's a little dirt track in the little uh, concave area. Take your towel and just kind of give it a good wipe. Probably hasn't been wiped since no one ever opened it. Give it a good blow from dust. Wipe these corners as well. And once we seal it, we're golden. All right, so this is it. Now the two Phillips that we try to ram into the gauge cluster, there's one here. I believe it goes from the back side or the front side, but I can't remember. I think it goes from the front side. The reason why is because it doesn't have a hole here anyway, see? <laughs> So yeah, it goes from the front fry. No brainer there. Okay, so we're gonna take our Phillips, mount it here. Let's just give it support. Careful, it's both plastic. Don't want to over tighten it. And work our way on this corner here. Take the other bolt. We're gonna tighten it.
Okay. Oh, this feels really loose. So you want to be careful. I think it's not going to go anymore, so we don't want to force it. That's it. It's just to hold it in place. Once it's in there, you're good. Um, everything looks good. The bulbs are intact. You want to put a little pressure on the bulb. Don't put pressure on the wire. Put it like on the rubber area. Just make sure you push it in down. You know. These bulbs are just kind of like snugged in there. They're not really held in by anything other than the, there's a rubber piece and particle. So this one's coming loose. Give it a good snug down. That way when you don't see any lights coming onto one of these areas here, you pretty much know that one of those bulbs are probably loosed out or they're burned down and you need to replace it. Okay, so let's go ahead and put back our back cover. There you go. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so that's it there. See that how it fits perfectly? Goes like that and then fit it in. Okay, four bolts. These four bolts are gonna be, oh, we've got almost this one. This one's to prevent the wires from being yanked at and also cover the hole that it protruded out. So with this one here, it's, you just put it, let's see. You kind of like see there's little uh, rubber legs there or like anchor thing and then you just snap it in there like this. You probably want to snap it to the farthest, so that's what I'm going to do. Oh, maybe this going this way, sorry. So this one here, this little big piece right here, and it goes into the bigger, taller slot, because it won't fit the smaller one. There we go. And then these wires here, it's going to crimp these wires. I mean, not crimp it like a hard way, it's just plastic. It's going to like softly put in place, and you probably want to give it a little bit more slack inward, because you don't want to mess with the soldering on the other side. So go ahead, you know, if it seems like loose like this, just give it a little bit, just a little bit more. So that way it stays in place like, ah, uh, it's still actually loose, but that's fine. That's what it's for, and I think you can scoot like this maybe. There you go, I scooted it. Still the same, so okay, we tried. And you can put some silicone in here if you want to, give it a little bit more embrace. But I think you should be fine, because I think the supporting mechanism will probably be more likely. It's gonna be, um, uh, it's gonna be the little holder. So we'll go ahead and leave that right there. So we're gonna go ahead and tie this down with all this bracket. All right. See there, it just has that little support there at the bottom only. That's the lift. So we can work on one first. So let's try to get one in there. Now again, these are gonna be the, the four. They're gonna be the same length, but they're gonna be a little smaller in flange looking then compared to our main cover here which is going to be a little fatter see there a little fatter a little bigger diameter for the flange area that's the flange right there that holds a little bit more of the surface space so this is all it needs is this small thin ones okay we should have another one there we go put that in there all right so let's go ahead and put that 